Our scripture this morning is from the first chapter of Mark, verses 21 through 28. They went to Capernaum, and when the Sabbath came, Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. The people were amazed at his teaching because he taught them as one who had authority, not as the teachers of the law. Just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit cried out, What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Be quiet, said Jesus sternly. Come out of him. The evil spirit shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. The people were all so amazed that they asked each other, what is this, a new teaching and with authority? He even gives orders to evil spirits and they obey him. News about him spread quickly over the whole region of Galilee. This ends the reading of God's word for today. So over the past few weeks, we've been talking about God's calling on our lives uh, and his calling on the lives of some of the disciples. And uh, then last week, we talked about how he had called Jonah to go to Nineveh as well. We discussed how God has a calling on each of our lives and what that means for us. Now, what we will focus on this morning is how we use discernment in order to understand what it is that God is calling us to do with our lives. Now, when we talked about our calling last week, we talked about how we all have a calling from God. We all have the same calling from God when it comes to taking the gospel of Jesus to others, right? We are all called to do that. However, each of us has a different calling from God as well. A calling to use our spiritual gifts in ways that help further the kingdom. So the process of determining what it is that God is calling us to do in any given situation, we refer to as discernment. Now each year towards the end of summer and the beginning of fall, I enter into a season of discernment myself. As a pastor in the United Methodist Church, uh, each year we have to discern whether God is calling us to continue serving the church that we are at, or if God is calling us to move into another area of ministry. Right now, the cabinet, the bishops and the conference superintendents are in a season of discernment, deciding where they should place pastors in the upcoming year. So as we think about discernment, we think about how we should be spending time in prayer and spending time studying the word of God and spending time especially listening to what God is trying to accomplish through us. Now this morning, as we talk about discernment, I'm going to take a little bit of a different road to discuss discernment and what it might look like in someone's life. So as we talk about the sermon this morning, I'd like to use a movie um, that I'm sure you guys are all familiar with, and we're not going to sit and watch the movie because I think you guys probably know it pretty well, um, to illustrate what discernment can look like, and especially to illustrate what improper discernment can lead to. So I know we are a few weeks removed from our Christmas season, but I'd like to use the movie A Christmas Story to illustrate what improper discernment can look like. Now, if you don't know the movie A Christmas Story, I don't believe you'll get too lost today. I'll give you enough background to know what's going on uh, so that you don't have to wonder about the movie. But there's a good chance that you do know this movie. Uh, maybe you don't even know that it's called A Christmas Story. So it's a movie about a young boy named Ralphie, growing up in the Midwest in the 1950s. And Ralphie has discerned that for Christmas, 
he should get a Red Ryder BB gun. Now, does that sound a bit more familiar to you than just a Christmas story? Um, maybe uh, if that didn't work, you can think of the lamp shaped like a leg. That's usually what people think of when they think of the movie. So throughout this movie, Ralphie tells every adult that he meets that he wants a Red Ryder BB gun. He tells Santa Claus. He tells his parents. He tells his teachers. He writes an essay about how he wants this gun and why he believes he should have it. That's actually where our title from the sermon comes today, Don't Bother Me, I'm Thinking. Um, as he's writing his essay, his friends try to get him to come play, and he tells them, don't bother me. I'm thinking about how I should write this. So he writes this essay. He has a flash board in his brain, how his teacher's going to read it and think that he's so brilliant, uh, and he's going to get exactly what he wants. He thinks he'll get an A++ on his paper. He visions his uh, essay going so well, the other students carry him out on, his shoulder, on their shoulders of the classroom because he's so brilliant. And then he's shocked when he gets it back and it has a C on it. And the P teacher has written the words, you'll shoot your eye out on the paper. And then he goes to Santa Claus. He asks him for a Red Ryder BB gun. He gets the same response, you'll shoot your eye out, kid. When he tells his parents, his mother is insistent that they won't buy him one because, again, you'll shoot your eye out. But Ralphie continues to insist, I won't shoot my eye, eye out. And he hopes against hope that he'll get that BB gun for Christmas. And then on Christmas Day, he does get his Red Ryder BB gun. He goes out to shoot it for the first time. He lines up his shots and the BB ricochets back and hits him in his glasses, breaks his new glasses. And had he not been wearing them, guess what? He would have shot his eye out. Now... If you're sitting there this morning and you're wondering, what does this have to do with the process of discernment? That's a fair question. See, the problem that we run into at times as Christians, when we're trying to discern what it is God wants from us, we find ourselves focusing on the things that we want for ourselves. We find ourselves focusing on the things that we want to do instead of being open and listening to what God has planned for us or wants from us, see, what we do is we try to bend the will of God to be what it is that we want to do. Now, what happens when we do this? Well, metaphorically, we find ourselves in a situation where we end up shooting our own eyes out, right? You see, just like Ralphie was so focused on getting his BB gun, he was unwilling to listen to everyone around him, telling him of the dangers of what could happen if he would get it. We do the same thing with God. We get so focused on what it is that we believe we want or what it is that we believe we need to be doing that when God tries to tell us no at every turn, we ignore him. Or we twist what it is that he is trying to tell us to fit into what we think we should be doing. Well, brothers and sisters, when we do that, that is not discernment. That is us imposing our will over what God would have from us. See, discernment is a process in which we have to be open to what God is calling us to. Now, often... Discernment is a lengthy process. It is one that we need to take time to do properly. We need to make sure that we are praying and listening to what God is calling us to. And because it's a lengthy process, there's a frustration that can set in because we want things done in our time. But God's time is not our time. See, he knows the perfect timing for all things. And he knows the perfect timing for calling us to do what it is that he would like us to do. And so we have to remain patient as we're waiting for the right time. And I know that's a very hard thing in our society today. We are not an overly patient people, right? We've become accustomed to instant gratification, right? If you don't know the answer to something, what do you do? You Google it, right? Most people do. Um, and so you have a, almost an instantaneous answer to things. And so we've got accustomed to that, but that is not how God works. 
So often, discernment is a lengthy process, and it takes time to get it right. Sometimes, however, discernment is a quick process. There are times when it is very, very quick. So I want to tell you a story about my own life when uh, my parents were able to discern something very, very quickly. So when I was about eight years old, we went on vacation and we went to visit uh, my great aunt and uncle that lived in the foothills of Georgia. And as we were visiting uh, with my uncle Charlie, and my uncle Charlie is, was one of those guys that he, I'm sure you have them in your life. There's just characters that stand out in your life um, just because they are who they are. My uncle Charlie was one of those guys, uh, just uh, uh, a character upon character, a, a really, really great man. Um, and I, I do miss him greatly, but uh, my uncle Charlie said, Eric, how old are you now? And I said, well, I'm, I'm eight, about eight years old, Uncle Charlie. And he said, well, you know what? I think it's time that you got your first shotgun. Now, he was going to give me one of his old shotguns to take back to Oklahoma with me. Um, and that way I could go hunting with it. And I, I was super excited about it, right? You know, what little boy wouldn't be like excited about getting something like that? So I ran to tell my parents about it and told them how excited I was that I was going to get this shotgun from Uncle Charlie. Uh, and they looked at each other and they instantly discerned that that was not a good idea. Now, there are people, obviously, uh, at that age, young men that are ready to begin hunting. Um, and, you know, it wouldn't have been a big deal for them to get the first shotgun at the age of eight. But I was not that young man. Um, I was not ready uh, to have the responsibility of something like that. Um, and they discerned very quickly that my skill set was not up to par. And I can tell you that they were correct because probably uh, within a year prior to that, I had been involved in a BB gun fight with some of my friends um, and shot one of their older brothers, and he went running to their parents about that. So that probably played a little bit of a part in deciding I wasn't ready for a shotgun. So they said, no, Eric, there's no way you're going to get that shotgun. So I went back to my Uncle Charlie and, and kind of downtrodden, and I said, well, I talked to my mom and dad, and they said, no, I can't have the shotgun. And he said, well, you know what, that's fine. We're going to listen to them. You can't have the shotgun this time. But I'm going to give you a Red Ryder BB gun to take home with you. <laughs> and, that time, and you take that home, and you practice, and maybe next time you visit, you'll be ready for a shotgun. Now, I never did get a shotgun from him, but I do still have that Red Ryder BB gun all these years later. See, sometimes discernment is quick. Sometimes we're thinking and praying on what God wants us to do, and he tells us right away. He leads us right away. Yes, that is where you should be going. Yes, that is what you should be doing. And then sometimes the discernment process is quick. And it's in the negative. No, that is not where you should be going. No, that is not what you should be doing. See, just like my parents were ultimately looking out for my safety and probably the safety of the other kids in the neighborhood, quite honestly, um, God looks out for our safety as well in those moments where he tells us, no, child, that is not where you should be going. So as we go forward this week, Let's make sure that we're spending time in prayer to discern what it is God is calling us to do. Let us be patient if the answer does not come quickly. And let us be brave enough to follow if the answer does come quickly to us. My challenge for you this week is this. I'd like you to spend some time in prayer and listening to what it is God is calling you to do. Amen.